Okay, so thank you very, very much for joining. I think we already gave a little bit of time for people to um, like join the space. So let's get started with our webinar today. So again, thank you very, very much for everyone who is joining and for the people who are um, starting to join at this moment. Um, we're going today to be talking a little bit more about how to optimize your remote, your remote work experience. So I am your host. I am Angela Serrano. I am the head of quality and pro management here at Bunny Studio. Um, as panelists, I have today uh, our Bunny Pro associate Jonathan Sanchez. Hi guys, welcome to our webinar. And we also have our talent acquisition lead, Maria Murcia Fajardo. Hi everybody. So uh, we're going to go over the topics first that we're going to be covering. So um, first, we're going to give you some general tips for remote working. Uh, this should apply to all of you guys. Then we're going to go over some tips for writers and translations specifically. Um, these are things that can also be for everyone, but um, are more like specific for, for these type of creatives. Then we're going to go over some tips for voiceover artists about building your studio, recording from home, finding silent spaces, and, and like basically organizing um, your recording schedule for these complicated times. And then we're gonna be talking a little bit more about how we um, can help you to maximize your Bunny Studio experience and how other things you can do um, or that we have in mind right now so that you can work better um, with Bunny Studio right now. Then we're gonna have an open Q&A section where you can ask any questions that you have. While we are talking, you can go to the Q&A section that you're gonna find in your screen um, in the Zoom panel and you can add all of your questions there. If you don't see it or if you don't find it, you can also add your questions to the chat and we will make sure that we answer them um, as we go over all of the questions that we receive. Um, so now let's get started. I'm going to give the word to Maria. She's gonna start with this part. Thank you, Anke. So as you guys know, and if you don't, uh, Bunny Studio has been a remote company for a couple of years now, and we're very used to working from home. So we wanted to share some of the tips we've learned along the way to make your work experience better and also healthier when you're working at home. So first of all, active pauses are key. Make sure you stand up for at least five minutes for every hour or so of work. Stretch a bit, walk around the room, your body will thank you. Stay hydrated. This is key to your health, especially, and will also keep you uh, fresh throughout the day. Employ a time management method. Uh, we work a lot with Pomodoro, the Pomodoro technique at Body Studio, and we also use time boxing techniques. Those have been very useful to us. Um, now that you're home and you're with a lot of people, try to find a space that is secluded from outside noise and also allows others in the space that you're sharing continue with their day-to-day -day activities. Communicate your availability hours to friends and family and colleagues because working from home does not mean working 24 or seven. Also make your pending projects and your ongoing projects visible in the shape of an agenda or maybe a board so you understand and you can organize your day accordingly. You can also use a cloud-based service to back up both your work and portfolio, make sure nothing gets lost. Last but not least, economize your internet bandwidth and close any unnecessary apps and unnecessary pages when you're uploading or sending files. And now we can move on to the writers and translators section. <laughs> so to my fellow writers and translators, some of the tips we want to share today are these. Uh, first of all, building an online network works a lot. Take an advantage of social media that you probably have right now and get your friends, family, and colleagues to spread the word about your work, your work and skills. Uh, network around with other professionals in the area. And we suggest also making use of our community space so you can interact with other pros in these categories. Diversify. Uh, consider offering your services in areas related to your main craft. For us, for example, could be translation, oh no, translation, transcription, sorry, captioning, subtitling. These can be related services they can also offer as a complement. Keeping a clear and organized desk can aid a lot to your concentration. So keep a clean surface. This always works wonders to have a fresh new start for every day. We also trust a lot in the good old pen and paper approach. So keep a notebook closed so you can write down any stray thoughts and ideas. So research also is key to success. There are several online resources for this purpose. For example, JSTOR, which is a very big database of articles, has a lot of resources free for public access. The Internet Public Library hosts around 500,000 essays of topics 
articles and essays in a variety of topics. Uh, the Merriam-Webster online dictionary is also a good asset for us to work with. And last but not least, look up your local libraries. Uh, local libraries do a lot of effort in putting money into digital assets, so you can check them out and see what they offer to you. Make sure also that your article, your work is reviewed at least once or twice. Uh, if you cannot do this with a peer or a colleague, try apps like Hemingway and Grammarly that can give you a head start on this front. Uh, finding a word processor that works for you best. Not everybody is happy working with, for example, Microsoft Word, so there are a lot of alternatives online. One of them is Google Docs. We work a lot with Google Docs because it backs your work up right away into your drive. And why not other kind of uh, processors that are related to words, but not quite like Spear. I found this about this uh, application recently, which says it's a thought processor. So check that out and see if maybe it's a fit for your work. Ambient noise can also help you feel in the silence to increase your concentration. Full silence can be uh, sometimes more distracting than noise. So uh, ambient noise also helps increase your creative cognition according to the University of Chicago. And a resource for this is called Cofivity. It gives you a lot of options for ambient noise. And last but not least, remember to always, always do wrist exercises when you're doing your active pauses to prevent injuries and carpal tunnel syndrome. That's it for the writers and translators. Okay, thank you very much. If you have any questions about this or would like us to elaborate on it, please remember to share your questions in the Q&A or chat sections. Now, let's go for a little bit of tips for our voice pros. So um, some of these are going to be um, more common for you. Some of you already know this, but we just really want to go over them and to reinforce some of these um, things that you should be doing. So first of all, um, if you're already working from your home studio and you have been working from your, your studio for a long time and you don't have to change your working conditions considering um, the times that we're in right now, um, these are some things that could be helpful for you. So first of all, take 10 to 15 minute vocal breaks every two hours of consecutive recording. If you can take a little bit more, the better. However, your voice is going to get very tired. It's like working out. If you are doing push-ups for one hour or whatever, I know that's more like more likely not possible um but but if you're doing put but if you're doing push-ups well your body is not going to take it so try to take breaks try to slow down try to breathe in and try to let your voice um take much needed rest so that you can last a little longer now um, rest for at least 20 minutes after having big meals before hitting the recording booth. This will reduce the chances of you having acid reflux and potentially not being able to use your voice um, at your full capacity. You're, when you're recording, you're more likely going to be using a lot of your diaphragm and putting a lot of pressure into your um, like like on your on your on your like belly area so if you're full and you just had a big meal it's going to be complicated um for you to have uh full control of of, of like your breathing and your breathing techniques um adjust re your recording hours to match the silent hours at home to reduce external noises so right now it's not a lie that a lot of people are going to be around and as maria was mentioning um if people if you live with people and you have housemates um it's going to be much more complicated right now to find silent moments at home so try to adjust your hours so that the people that are around you can also use the space and can also make noises and make sure that you communicate if you need to have some time um to record or because you're doing a big project and you have to have them silent try to make sure that you let them know and that you also um, find consensus um around that another thing that i know is very tiring to do but is unmount your equipment every time you stop using it this is going to help you in various ways first of all it's going to help you keep the longevity because the more time that you have it plugged in the more electricity is going to go through your equipment especially for microphones um so if you are plugging in and pl plugging it off and like plugging it in um within the times that you're going to be working that is going to help a lot second it's going to help you organize your schedule and working hours as we were mentioning at the beginning you're not going as if you don't have your microphone mounted all the time it's going to be easier for you to respect your resting spaces so you're not going to have the like the temptation of just jumping in and recording when you're about to go to sleep or when you are having uh, lunch or when you are having 
uh, quality time with your housemates and family. Um, and the other thing is that it's also going to help you understand and realize the positioning of your microphone in your space. When you unmount them and you take it out, you're going to be able to see in perspective how it is located considering your space. So you're going to be able to like experiment a little bit more with different positionings. You're going to be able to find other areas and other spots that you can do, especially when you're working from home where more likely you don't have like the like the most perfectly designed acoustically traded space by um by an architect so moving on um we also have some other some other tips if you no longer have your recording space you had to move you have to go um stay at a family uh, member's house because um of of, of these current um self-isolation period um these are some tips that can help you build an impromptu um recording space at home um so first of all closets laundry rooms and shelves are easily treatable spaces to become recording booths why they're usually small spaces they are usually already set so that you can um with with the right um depth so that you can put the microphone and also put some um isolation materials in them um avoid bathrooms and kitchens usually for um sanity and for hygiene purposes Bathrooms and kitchens are made of very reflective materials that are very easy to clean. So if you have materials that are like that are from these nature, like, for example, tiles or glass with a mirror um, or marbles um, or even like synthetic marbles, they're usually very reflective materials. So try to avoid those spaces. Um, you can make quick isolation of your space with very with materials that we all have around so clothes are great um isolation materials blankets and quilts towels egg cartons are amazing substitutes for um acoustic foams um polyesterine or styrofoam this i would treat it with a grain of salt because they're not very good for the environment but if you have some laying around because of some project or something um this could be a good option and carpets are great um, solutions as well that you can try when you are building um, like a smooth recording place at home um, now, it's important to consider that what one of the one of the things that matters the most is positioning. If you position your microphone well and your isolation materials correctly, you're going to have half of the work done. Trust me. Um, isolate. Sometimes you can even have the perfect space, the perfect vocal booth. It's the perfect size and the perfect area. But just because your microphone is slightly tilted or because it is looking towards the incorrect place or the incorrect size, um, it's going to capture more reflections and it's going to capture even more background noises. So experiment with that a lot. Try to move things around. Don't be scared of, of, of trying different positionings. Uh, just record yourself every like to different position that you try and that's going to give you better results and areas in which you can um, like find areas of improvement. Even if you have your own recording already and your, your recording space already and you are just um, adjusting it right now, this is a great tip that you can try so that you can even um, improve, um, like the, maximize your current space. The other thing is that if you really just live in like a one bedroom place like I do, or it's very difficult for you to find um, like isolation materials, or you're still having a little bit of trouble with room echo, try reflection filter. We're going to go over um, these specific type of equipment a little bit later during this webinar. Uh, we're going to give some recommendations, but there are a lot of other options but give it a try it will definitely help and those are built precisely uh, more likely um, to record in spaces that are not perfectly treated so they're going to be a great tool for you okay guys so following up if this is the first time you're going to build your own home recording studio space we have some tips for you first when it comes to equipment, try to invest in your equipment because it's not just only for this moment, but it's going to last for the next couple of months or hopefully for the next years. So try to buy mid to high quality equipment. And we're going to give you some suggestions later on. And also you can just come to the community and talk with the other pros to see what equipment are they using and which one is more uh, is going to work for you too. Please, please, please avoid USB mics. Uh, record with your phones, with iPods, with headsets, with computer microphones, or any other stainless mics. Please, it's very important that you use a dedicated microphone for all the recordings that you're going to be doing for us. Next, we recommend you use very, very um, specifically professional editing software. Uh, Pro Tools, they have a free version that you can get, or you can have Reaper, which is offering free licenses now. 
um, in, uh, in light of the current situation. So you can just go to the web page and try that one too. Or if you want, and if you're a Mac user, you can try Logic Pro 2. Uh, please avoid post-processing your files. Have in mind to fix everything right from the recording. Don't try to fix it later on the post-production, meaning acoustic treatment. Try to use what Ann Hedge told you. Um, EQ, um, noise background, everything. Just try to fix it right from the recording so you don't have to over-process your audio later on and then have some issues with our quality control team. Uh, it's very important that you always record with a pop filter and to get a sturdy microphone base. That's it. Um, also, you can prevent some QC issues later down the road and your vocal is going to sound more professional. And last but not least, electrical noise is a real thing. So please make sure your energy cables are grounded and try to keep in uh, not tangling at all times. That will help you a lot and is going to avoid those disturbing and not want the noises on all over your recordings. Yes, yeah, so just a little bit uh, else in regarding the post processing. Using processing is not the worst thing in the world. Like it's not something that you should be afraid of. But if you don't know well how to do it, it's important to stay away from it. Why? If you're not familiar with the processing that you're adding with noise reduction, EQ, limiting compression, um, if you are not familiar with them, you can do more harm than good to your recording. Um, every single processing that you add is going to increase the no it's going to increase the noise floor of your recording and it's going to reduce the, the headroom of every recording that you have. So any post processing that is going to be done by uh, the final client or with a mixing of music or video or sound effects, it's going to be even more complicated, especially if it's not done right. So that's why it's very important to have the cleanest recording that you possibly can right from the source and then if there's any editing needed try to do the editings manually so cutting and fading that's very important and adjusting times and adjusting volumes manually um, instead of relying on those post-processing um, if it's 100 percent necessary and you know when you are trained and you have had experience with this before by all means give it a try but try to stay clear from those type of processing now let's go to the topic of equipment. So there are a ton of equipment options out there. Like really the kind, the number of microphones that you're gonna find in the market, the number of interfaces, headphones, um, everything that you're gonna find outside is just, I mean, amazing. Uh, there are microphones for every single type of voice and some that are gonna boost some frequencies some that are gonna boost others. Um, the possibilities are endless. Here, we just wanna give you some recommendations so that you can get started or that you can consider um, if you already have your setup and you wanna do an upgrade and all of that, or you're just starting to build um, like a mobile recording setup that you can take with you or that you're just starting to build your recording um, at home. Um, these are some options that you can try, um, but of course it is going to depend on your specific needs, your space and your voice type. So for the interface, we have the Focusrite Scarlett 2i2. That's a very cheap, very flagship, um, like option that you have. It has great quality preamplifiers. Give it a try. It has um, two inputs and two outputs. Um, so give it a try. It's a very good option. Then we have the app, you do it. It's really great. Only works for mic users. And we have the RME Babyface. It's very similar to the app, you one, um, but this one has um, connection with, with um, Windows devices and not just Mac, but have amazing um, preamplifiers um, that you can use for almost every microphone. Uh, when it comes to microphones, uh, some of my personal recommendations, this is from my, the, the microphones that I have personally used. I have the Blue Bluebird. It's a very well-rounded microphone. It doesn't have a lot of boosts that are um, difficult to work with, so it works for the majority of the voice types. Uh, the Audio-Technica AT2020, this has also been a microphone that has been famous for a very long time for uh, voice recordings. The, this one also has a USB version, but please stay away from that one. Um, and the, also the Shure SM7B. This, the Shure SM7B, it's a great, great vocal microphone. It has, it's very rich, especially to give body to, to voices. Like for example, like mine, that I have a very thin, um, high pitched voice that sounds very young. Um, these microphones specifically can give you great, um, body and, and, and like give it a more well-rounded, more balanced uh, response. 
Um, this Shure SM7B microphone is a dynamic microphone. So if you're planning on getting this one, please also consider getting an external preamplifier or a cloud lifter. Um, why? Because these uh, dynamic microphones require much more gain than a condenser microphone does because they are a little less sensitive than condenser microphones. So if you use just your normal preamplifier and add gain to the Shure SM7B or similar um, dynamic microphones for vocals like the Electro Voice RE20, um, you're more likely going to have a high level of hiss. So please keep that in mind if you uh, want to go over uh, those dynamic microphones. Um, we have more resources on this topic on our community space. We have a webinar that we hosted on microphones and a lot of um, articles. So if you want more in-depth information on this, uh, hit us here on the, in the Q&A section or you can go to the community and read those articles. Um, for headphones, the headphones that we in the quality control team use are the Sony MDR7506. These are super traditional every studio has them. Um, they're really, really good. They're close by headphones and uh, they are very balanced. They are a little bit on, on, on the lower side. They have a little bit of a boost, but they're really, really nice. Um, and those are the ones that we use. So you're going to have the most similar um, response for what we tell you guys to change. Um, you're going to be able to listen to that, basically the same thing that we are if you use those headphones. Um, the Bayer Dynamic DT770, those are more high-end um, headphones. They're also closed back, really, really good uh, headphones. Um, they last for a long time and they're great for mixing. Um, then we have the Audio-Technica ATH and 50X. Um, these are also very similar to the MDR7506 and a great solutions and great options if you wanna try something different. Um, now, regarding reflection filters, um, there are different reflection filters in, in the market. Um, starting with the SE Reflection Filter X. This has been around for a very long time. Um, it's around, I believe, 80 to $90. Um, the Reflection Filter Pro being $150, if I'm not wrong. Um, these are American dollars, just in case. Um, you can get it, you can try it out. It's very nice. Uh, it's a very nice vocal booth. Um, then you have the Chaotica Eyeball. It's very popular and it really, it really works very well. I personally have one uh, and it works very, very nicely. Or there are, there are other options that, uh, like the Aston Microphones Halo Reflection Filter. This is like an in-between of the reflection, regular reflection filters and a Chaotica Eyeball. So it's a little bit more rounded um, and it's very well. There are a lot of other options out there. Again, these are just some options that you can try and that you can find that are um, very common and that we personally know work well. Um, but of course, it will depend on a case by case basis. And now let's move forward to how to maximize your Bunny Studio experience. I'm going to give the word to Johnny here. Hi, guys, again. So uh, first, very important, we're very excited about this, we have new category recruitment. So you, our current pros or new pros that are going to come here, we want to know that the current pros that we have, we're going to have a special entry into the application process for video, transcription, dubbing, and post-production. So please take advantage of this, talk to us, write to us, because you're going to be taking into account very special into this process. Also, if you need a break, you can just set it up on your dashboard. Uh, you can go to vacation settings, set your away time, and we won't be sending you any work or emails during that period of time. We understand that during uh, these moments, you might want to step away for a little while and have some time with your family or take care of some issues that you might have. So just let us know and we will be away from you on that period of time. And finally, stats, stats, stats. Just as Anne had mentioned on a previous email, we'll be ignoring uh, negative impact caused to your stats. So please don't hesitate to write to us. We're gonna evaluate case by case, everything that's gonna be happening and we're gonna be taking care of those stats for you. Thank you guys. Now, Johnny, you mute yourself. <laughs> I'm sorry, I muted myself. But now, some questions. Uh, this is the part where you let us know how we can help you. So if you have some questions, just as Anne has said, uh, write in the Q&A or in the chat, are we gonna be taking care of those? And if we can manage to solve them in time here, we're gonna 
send you an email with this or we're going to be posting this on the community too for you to come back and revise the answers we have yes also if you have any 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 ideas on how we can help you um things that you would like us to consider as well please let us know um this is the space for feedback as well we're going to be considering and, and addressing um like your concerns and and possibilities so that we can all support each other during these these complicated times i know that nobody was expecting something like this so um so yeah, we're all just here. Uh, we're all working together. We're all partners and we just want to make sure that, that we can get the best um, out of everything. So I am here in the questions and answers option. And the first question that we have is, can I use Audacity until I'm able to afford Pro Tools or Logic? So the short answer is yes. Um, I wouldn't recommend Audacity. Why? The editing tools from Audacity are very basic and they're very hard to use. Um, if you get used to Audacity, it works in a very different way like other, um, like other softwares, like Pro Tools or Logic. So if you get very used to Audacity, moving to Pro Tools, it's gonna be a much harder and a much longer, um, a much longer like curve to learn. So um, Pro Tools actually has a, has a free version. It's called Pro Tools First. You can download it. It has limited recording channels, but for voiceover, it works like a charm. Um, I used Pro Tools First for a while because I lost my license um, because I had a very old Pro Tools version. And then I moved to Pro Tools First uh, for a while and it worked really, really, really well. Um, they have um, some processing that you can buy from them that it's specific for Pro Tools, um, for Pro Tools First. And uh, it's just very very easy and if you get a tutorial and you learn it once you are more um like capable and you have a lot of experience and you're able to afford um the paid version of pro tools it's going to be great they have a subscription service as well for 20 dollars a month so uh, i would personally recommend to to shift to pro tools um first right away um logic i am not very familiar with it because i don't use mac um but i'm sure that other people can give can, can give just more more recommendations on that front so thank you for your thank you for your question now um next question is the blue yeti the only microphone that fits in the fat boy chaotic eyeball if not what are some other microphones that fit in it so two things here first the yeti is a usb microphone i don't recommend USB microphones. Uh, maybe they, they work really well for podcasting or for like YouTubing or for streaming. Um, but something that doesn't require a lot of, of, of like input and that you're going to be doing um, like fast streaming online. Um, it works really well for those things. But for professional voiceovers and professional recording, I don't personally um, recommend that. Now on the Chaotica eyeball, a lot of microphones actually fit. So I I, I I have it right now. Let me let me go and get mine right back. Um, so I was doing some additions here. So this is my Chaotica eyeball, just in case some of the people here haven't seen it. And I have the Audio Technica AT2050, um, and I have it right in here, and it fit perfectly. So if you see, and it just you just slide it right here. Um, that this is like how it looks from the inside. It has a hole at the bottom. So not all microphones will fit. Like for example, a Neumann more likely is not going to fit here like a TLM 102 or a TLM 103. Um, maybe the U80, not the 87, but the 67 that is a little bit smaller, but all of the Audio-Technica uh, microphones fit here. Um, the blue microphones fit here really well. Um, I have tried the Spark, the Bluebird and the Firefly and they work really well. Um, so yeah, like a lot of these sturdy large diaphragm microphones or like small diaphragm microphones will more likely fit in the Coyotica eyeball. Also, this is foam, so it expands quite nicely. So more likely you're gonna be able to fit um, different microphones there. So thank you very much for the question. Now, um, what is dubbing? So Mafia, I don't know if you wanna answer this one. Sure, so dubbing is actually like a conjoined effort of creative work to get a final product. So for example, we've been getting questions of voice pros that they want to become dubbing pros. Uh, small parenthesis, you're all going to be considered for dubbing, no worries on that front. But a dubbing project involves a lot of extra steps. For example, you would need to have a script translated and then do the voiceover for the dubbing itself. And afterwards, we work with uh, audio editing and video editing to get the final dubbed 
product, product sorry. So it's a, it's a, it's a conjoin, conjunction of steps. Uh, a crucial part of dubbing really is the voice itself. So we are going to work with all of you, our trusted voice pros for this, but we're also going to um, join in other pros for our projects. We're going to work with transcriptors if needed. We're going to work with translators. We're going to work with writers as well in case we need to proofread the scripts before sending to record. And afterwards, video editors, audio editors to get the final dubbed work for our client. So it's just a sequence of steps, uh, but you're going to be part of that big sequence. I don't know if that answers the question. Let me know if, if that was good. Thank you, Mafe. Yeah, if you have any follow-up questions, please go ahead and, and, and add them there. All right, next question we have. Can you do a video chat where you show your recording space and tell us what you can do to improve it? Oh, of course, yeah. Um, I can actually, we can actually do um, like another video maybe or how we, you can set like a recording space um, right now. I am not in my regular recording space because I am at home and I had to improvise. Um, but uh, yeah, we can totally show you um, all, like these different things. And if you have any ideas or any of the pros here would like to join and share how their recording space is set up and, and, and possibly help other people on different ways in which we can do that, that would be awesome. That's a great idea. Thank you very much. Now, um, have you had any experience with the XLR 2SB cable? I will assume this is a brand of a cable, not if, if it is a brand, I don't really have um, like a recommendation there. Oh, okay, so an XLR 2 USB cable. Okay, so I don't recommend this. This is basically taking your microphone and making it a USB microphone. Um, what is the problem with USB microphones? Um, USB microphones have two different things inside. First, all of the processing and all of the, and the capsule and the mic and the built of a microphone inside. And they also have the ADDA converter. What is an ADDA converter? The analog to digital, digital to analog converter. Um, we have a, a webinar on this topic in our community space, so I recommend you to go there so that you can learn a little more in detail what this means. But basically, when you're recording your voice and like in the world, your voice are analog waves. So it's like the waveform, the, 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 the wind moving in the space, creating waves. And what the microphone does is that it, be, it makes that into a digital signal, basically zeros and ones to make sure that it translates all of those, um, all of those waves, the, those analog waves into digital information that can be then put into like a computer. Then what it does afterwards is that you have to take that information that's digital and put it in an analog form, that is the waveform that you see on your software that can be reproduced from your speakers, headphones, or um, whatever way in which you can. So when those ADDA converters have to be very, very, very delicate, they are very, they're a very, very important part of the recording process. So what's the problem when you have a, a USB microphone? Both of those things are within one device and it is actually like half the price of just getting an external microphone and an interface. So that, literally is not the best build for a converter and for um, like a gain and for a preamplifier. So it's very important that you have two different or two um, different devices so that each of them can focus on the task that they're supposed to. So the majority of the times with these USB microphones, the microphone part of the build is amazing. And it's great because it's just like their flagship microphones, like the AT2020. Um, however, where they're lacking is in the preamplifying and the converting period and the converting area. So um, that's why when you then, then you take those USB microphones and put them in the computer, they have a higher level of hiss and a higher level of digitally um, produced hiss. It's because those, those, those converters are not that high quality and as far and, and thus the, um, like, the sensitivity is not going to be the best. So um, that's why I don't recommend using this USB to XLR cable because if you even, even have those things, um, you're skipping all that conversion and you're skipping all that preamplifying and all that gain and all that balancing that interfaces do. So um, if you can get an interface instead, um, it would be great. Um, 
yeah, so um, I personally would not recommend trying these cables for this matter. Now, next question. Okay, so yeah, that answered the dubbing question. Thank you very much. Great. Good to know. Okay, elaborate on the question. I am assuming this is of the videos of the spaces. Can we send in videos of where we record and tell us what work and doesn't work? Absolutely. That's actually what our community space is for. If you go there, you're going to see some two topics. Um, one that is for you to share recordings that maybe we rejected and the other one so that you can get feedback on your work. So you can send in a video of your space, pictures of your space if you cannot take a video, recordings that you have done um, at home and, and, and at your current space. Um, and we're gonna we we actually have our quality control team there like some of the members that will be more than happy to give you all the feedback that they can so um, use our community space you can share your files in a google drive link or a dropbox link and uh, also other pros are are there as well so it's not just us but it's also um, other professionals that have been doing voiceovers for a long time Okay, next question. How do you feel about breath and mouth noises and recordings? Of course, I try to minimize, but I always try to edit all of them out because I am unsure of the amount that is okay. I am with you on this one. I cut every breath and mouth noise. Um, to me, uh, a professional recording doesn't have breath noises um, and mouth noises. Of course, it depends on the flow and the, the kind of vibe that you're trying to give. But most, more often than not, what I have seen in my experience is that um, breath noises tend to sound like his and tend to sound like what they are, noises. So it's very complicated to keep them under control. Like um, there's people that just like lower the volume of the breath noises in some areas. For singing, actually breath noises are super, super important because it shows like the cadence of, of, of our recording and of the song and all of that. And like you plan to have those breath noises, but I believe that for commercials and for professional voiceovers that are not like character acting, I personally try to take them out. Um, and with mouth noises, I do feel that those are very distracting and they should be minimized as much as possible. Uh, we have an article in our community on how to control mouth noises. So I would recommend you to read it if you would like to get more um, like insight on how to keep those mouth noises under control. I personally just drink water before recording, like one second before I start recording, I have a sip of water. And while I'm recording, I take um, like uh, water drinking breaks so that I can understand um, when the noises are, are, are coming in or when they're being much more obvious and notorious for the recordings. So yeah, thank you for that question. Okay, so another question. What can I do if I record in my living room with hardwood floors? I put the microphone on a rug and record with my back to the curtains. Any other suggestions? Well, I think you're, you have a great starting point. Um, I also put um, a rug under my microphone, like a carpet um, and a rug. Um, what I also try to do is that I try to put like enclose, enclose yourself a little more if you have the option. So if you can put like, like um, maybe like a chair, and right in front of you and you put like a blanket that can go over you and the microphone and then and on the other side it can help you a little bit more um it's not going to be perfect more likely but you can start from there and try to find if you really just only have the living room try to find a corner that you can easily like isolate of course try not to make a very very small space because that is going to bring other problems like um, boxiness and boominess um, because basically how that works is that long um, like um, lower frequency waves are much longer than higher frequency waves so when you're recording very small spaces like uh, yeah very 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 tiny spaces those those um, like lower frequencies are going to be much more prominent in your recording and are going to bounce are going to stay much longer in the environment so um yeah i say that that's more like trial and error try to find um like ways in which you can accommodate yourself so that you can have a nice balanced recording and that you can put as as much isolation as you can on the strategy on the strategic areas that you can so avoid windows that you have in your living room avoid desks if you can because desks are usually are very reflective surfaces um avoid um if you have a tv avoid standing next to a tv um any yeah, other different ways that we that, that that you could try and then you can um experiment with to get there 
Okay, so can you suggest a good pop filter? Well, in my experience, most pop filters are basically the same. Um, the only thing that I would not recommend are the metallic uh, pop filters. I have found that metallic pop filters have a metallic sound to it, so to speak. So um, I try to go for mesh pop filters. Mine was very, very cheap. It was like $10. Um, as long as they have a big, long boom that you can adjust, as I was showing you. Let me show you here. Um, as long as it has a boom that you can adjust, like this one, so that you can move move it around um, your space. And it has a mesh like this. Um, it works really, it, it is more likely going to, to work really well. Um, if you don't have a pop filter or it breaks and you have no way to get a pop filter right now, um, a, these socks that are like, um, oh my God, how you call this? Mafe, help. A silk the silk socks the one that are like super silky i actually don't know the word for that pantyhose pantyhose oh, thank pantyhose. you johnny <laughs> so pantyhose uh those are really really great and the mesh is very very similar to this one so what i used to do when i was in college um and i didn't have one is that i would take um a tube of uh, like those big tubes of tape and just wrap the pantyhose around it. And you, it, of course, it's, in, it's uncomfortable because you have to have it with your hands, but it works very, very well. So um, while you get a good pop filter, just make sure that, it's, that it has mesh. It has a good boom that you can move around that is very sturdy. And um, that is also that it's big enough for you to cover your microphone. Like the idea is that you can cover the whole diaphragm of your microphone and a little bit more. Hope that answers your question. <laughs> Okay, so the recordings that we send to Voice Bunny should be unedited. How far are we allowed to edit them? So you, so you said cutting out the breath noises. Okay, so when we say unedited, it should be unprocessed. However, that cutting and cleaning of the recordings is essential for um, to have a professional result. So we always encourage you to cut and fade the breath noises, any noises that you have. Of course, if you are recording far from your computer and you have to come back and click, uh, well, you have to cut that click and you have to cut the beginning of the, like the, the audio that it has like a lot of, of noise. If you um, are making more than one take, you can always, you can always cut it and you can always paste and you can always like paste things around and then move around things. So cleaning the recording is super, super important. What we try to recommend you to avoid is processing um, especially if you are not familiar with, with processing, it's important um, for you to stay away from it as much as possible. Hope that answers your question. Okay, so how about nose, nose noises? I get a terrible whistle going on. Pretty much I use nasal spray. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I suffer from that as well. Um, what I personally do is that I try to locate my microphone lower on my on my mouth so that the noise sound that I have like the nose the noise coming from my nose is not as in the main diaphragm of my microphone so um just this is going to be as well in the in, in the webinar that we did on microphones but microphones have different polar patterns so I usually use cardioid which is basically that it takes the sound from the from the front and rejects all the sound from the back and it will take it's very directional so it means that it's going to take whatever is in front of it the best to their ability of course some of the noises around are going to be picked up but it's not going to be as strong as what is right in front of it so what I try to do is that I locate it like I have, I'm just going to use my microphone. So um, I have this. And what I try to do is that I try to locate it and I try to locate myself. So this is like the part. I try to put my nose like here, like right outside of, of like the microphone thing. Well, my microphone is a little bit lower because I don't know if you can see. Yeah, a little bit. Sorry for the lighting. So my microphone comes up to here. So I try to put my nose like around here of my microphone, like a little bit higher from the capsule of the microphone and I put my mouth, the like the main um, like opening of my mouth right in front of the microphone and that helps reduce a lot of the impact of those um, nasal noises that you may get and like the whistling and all of that. It's not, it's not going to be the, the most uh, like the perfect 
um, solution, but it really does help to lessen the impact and lessen like the like the the waves that are coming from from your nose. And yeah, just um, nasal spray. I also try to like uh, do a lot of breathing exercises so that I can control um, how my nostrils are opening. So that it, the more you open like the nostrils, the less those whistles are going to be in. Try to um, try to like uh, blow your nose right before you're going to start recording. Keep yourself very hydrated as well. Um, your mucuses are going to, the more hydrated your mucuses are, the less noises they're prone to make. Um, so if you're, if you have a cold or if you suffer from, um, like allergies, uh, you know, now that we are going to spring and you have allergy season there, um, it's important to keep yourself super, super hydrated so that your mucuses can like flush themselves and, um, you can have like the cleaner sound that you can. So hopefully that helps. Okay. Okay, so I already answered this one. Okay, so the next question. We have space for these two questions and then we're gonna move, uh, we're, we're gonna be over with the webinar, but any other questions that you may have, please share them and we will answer them uh, via email. We will also be doing like a recap of this webinar, like a very short one and sending it um, to you via email and sharing the recording as well, um, as well as taking care of, of and sharing everything on the community space. So the next question is, Small tripod and table, like a Zoom one is recommended or better use of a normal mic tripod on carpet just because it's better when standing. Okay, so both options are, are good. Um, one is not best than the other. It really just depends on when, where you're going to put your microphone. I have both. So depending on where I am recording or if I'm going to be traveling or, or if I'm going to be using like my, my, my cabinets back back there if I'm gonna be recording um, standing. Um, I choose which stand I use. Um, however, if you're gonna be putting it on a table, you have to make sure that the reflections coming from your table are as minimal as possible. As I was explaining, usually desks um, can reflect a lot of, a, a lot of noise. Um, of course, it depends on the type of, of, of desk that you have, but wooden floors, for example, and like laminated wood, um, plywood, I think it's the name in English. Um, if you put your microphone on there, that's very reflective. So if you're gonna do one of those on a table, um, please try to put like a rug or like a blanket, wrap your desk um, on, on, on a blanket or, or in a pit or, or like in, in, or if you have foam, try to put it around it so that all of those reflections are minimized as much as possible. So it just really depends on the space that you have. Uh, we gotta work with what we have. And, um, and yeah, just try to try to take advantage of whatever you have. There's no, no, not like a best option or like a best practice. It would just depend on how you can build your space at home and, and, and treat it and like to the best of your ability. So thank you for that question. And the last question that we have. Okay. All right. So I, I'm, I am not understanding this question, but it looks like it's a little more specific to your, to your case and to like on a specific project. So um, we're gonna be going over this question maybe via email. I believe it would be the best option. Um, I'm not very like sure um, as to how to answer to that right now because I am I don't understand really well. So um, if you can leave us your name in the chat or or more in here, we're. Um, Jonathan is going to be following up with you so that we can go over like that question more in detail and answer answer it more to our like the, the specific case that you have there. Okay. And um, I think that for that, we are done with all of the questions. Thank you very, very much. If we missed any question, please know that we're going to be answering those on a case by case basis. Um, if you have any other questions that you were not able to ask right now or that you or that we weren't able to go over um, in our webinar, please go ahead and email to us. We have uh, you can contact us at support at bunnystudio.com or in our community space. Um, the link is going to be available in your dashboard and in basically every email that we send. Um, so thank you very, 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 very much for your help and for joining and for working with us and for just being such great supporters and for just making part of our platform. Uh, we really appreciate you and we just hope that we can keep working together for a long time. A Please know that we are here to support you and to help you with anything that we can during these complicated times. Um, it's been very crazy for all of us. We're making um, like a lot of plans so that we can keep offering um, the, the same conditions that we have to you and just so that we can also um, 
maximize our working capability. So again, thank you very much. Thank you, Mafe, and thank you, Johnny, for joining and for uh, sharing all your tips. And I hope you have a great rest of your day, afternoon, night, good day if it's the morning for you.